Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafell, and I'm now joined by 2015 NFL Draft Prospect, Defensive tackle of Minnesota State University, Brian Keys. I appreciate you taking some time to chat today, Brian. How's everything going? Everything's going great, man. Happy to be here. Hey, the pleasure's all mine. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Like I do with most of my prospect interviews, I just want to start this interview off by asking you a pretty simple question. That is, uh, coming out of high school, how'd you decide to attend Minnesota State and play D2 football for the Mavericks? Um, main thing was just uh, visiting the campus because the story is that I was originally supposed to go to St. Cloud. That's what I was leaning to heavily. But once I got to the Maverick campus and I started walking around, I just envisioned myself there succeeding in more ways than football. And then leaving there was just kind of clear cut like this is where I need to be. And, of course, you were able to play right away. In 2010, you were uh, able to play in all 11 games, recorded 13 tackles, three tackles for loss, two sacks, and two forced fumbles. Uh, entering that season, did you expect to make the type of impact that you ended up making on the defense that season? Oh, no, I had no idea. I, thought I, I was in the mentality that I was going to rest, share, learn, it, learn the system, and go from there. But uh, a couple of situations happened with the D tackle in front of me. Michael Robinson, he couldn't play anymore. And they probably just threw me into the fire. And I'm just happy how things turned out for me. Now I see that uh, you know in the next the, the next season you know when I was getting ready for this interview I, I see that you only played in one game in 2011. Uh, can you tell us why that was? Was there an injury or something that slowed you down? Yeah, there was an injury that took me out for that season, and it was kind of a blessing in disguise because coming off my freshman year, I didn't know about my head was a thousand places. So I was just happy to be playing. I maybe had even a bit of an ego then, but. Then I had that injury, and to be able to sit out there here and get a different perspective, I learned a new respect for the game, and just powered me forward. And then coming off of that injury, I mean, the next two seasons in 2012 and 2013, you went on to play in 23 games, uh, recorded 39 tackles, 9.5 tackles for loss, 5 sacks, 3 pass deflections, and 2 interceptions. Uh, pretty impressive to say the least. Uh, now, with all that being said, I mean, what were your expectations entering this past season, knowing that it will be your final go-around at the college level? I mean, it's your senior year. Uh, like I said, it's your final go-around at the college level. Like, I got think you wanted to go out with a bang. Uh, for me, Coming in this final year, it was just about doing my job and whatever comes, comes. Uh, just give it my all. I mean, this could be my last time playing football. Hopefully not. That's what we're hoping for this weekend. But for the most part, it was just do whatever I could to help my team get to all the goal, which I'm happy that we did. Well, this past season was another solid one out of you, Brian. I mean, you went on to record 38 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, one sack, two pass deflections, and two forced fumbles. Uh, the Minnesota State Mavericks went on to uh, really dominate the regular season. I mean, there weren't really uh, many uh, many close games this past season. You guys finished the regular season 11-0. You guys then won uh, three straight playoff games to meet CSU Pueblo in the NCAA Division II National Championship game where you guys fell 13-0. to zero. Uh, Looking back, I mean, how exactly would you describe uh, th- this past season? I mean, your final year at Minnesota State. I know the ultimate goal is to win it all, and you guys did come very close, but I, I got to think that uh, th- this past season is still somewhat a, su- a success. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, the describers last season was just unbelievable. I mean, not a lot of teams get to do that in college, or let alone in any of their sporting things. So to be able to have a perfect streak for that long and then get to the final game and just just even compete, I mean, it's just something to just be happy about it. Congratulations to Colorado State because they play their butts off and we play their butts off and somebody had to lose, somebody had to win. And that was their day. And, of course, you being a defensive tackle, you're on that defense. Uh, you guys only allowed one touchdown, two field goals in that national championship game. It was a very close game. It was a pretty solid defensive showdown by both teams. I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts on that CSU Pueblo offense? I mean, uh, they, they have a lot of playmakers on that offense, including quarterback Chris Bonner, who is uh, he's really one of the top Division two prospects entering this year's draft. Yeah, I'm 
my thoughts on this is that it was, it was a well equipped team. They were well coached. They were well managed. They knew what they had to do. They um, took it. They took advantage of what they could and they executed when it was time. And my hats off to them because I played my. I felt like I played my best game that game, but they were the victors that day. So hats off to them. Once again, Chris Schanfeld talking with 2015 NFL Draft prospect Brian Keyes, defensive tackle of Minnesota State University. And Brian, uh, of course, when I mention your name along the lines of 2015 NFL Draft prospect, what goes through your mind? I mean, uh, I got to think it's always been a dream, but when did you realize that playing in the NFL may not only be a dream, but it could become a reality? You know, I think when it became a reality was around 2012 when I just came, when I had came fresh off my injury. And just, like I said, my perspective for the game has just changed. And I had always dabbled with the idea of actually wanting to do it. But I really got serious in 2012 because it was just like, you know what? I got a chance to actually do something. I believe I can actually hang with these guys. And I know I can put in the work ethic and do it. So to be here today and a couple days from the draft and maybe hearing my name called or even just receiving a phone call is just has me in awe. I just can't believe it. Now, there, there really is a ton of talent in the Division II ranks. I mean, you got yourself. I mentioned Chris Bonner. I mean, that, that CSU Pueblo team really does have a lot of talent. Over the last four years, uh, who would you say is the best or most impressive player you've had to play against? Well, I actually have to be within my own team as far as offensive line. I play like Chris Reed, Josh Meeker, Archer Brader, Max Hoffmeister, and uh, Luke Winters. Just that our whole line just across is just amazing. I mean, I think that's what kind of helped me be successful because I went, such, I went against such hard competition weekly, and that helped me prepare for the guys that we played against. All right, now uh, being a defensive tackle, I think you. I think I've also uh, heard in the past that you play nose tackle as well. Uh, what do you feel is your biggest strength as a defensive lineman? My strength as a defensive lineman is being able. I, I really like taking on double teams. I like sending a gap over the hole and just waiting for the back to run into me because he thinks he's got. Two guys taking on one guy, but I like kind of making a red C and then on my gap. I really like that. All right, and all it's right. like really controlling the run and stopping it. Hey, there you go, there you go. Now, now, is there a, is there anybody currently playing in the NFL that you might compare your game to? Personally, it'd be hard to compare myself to anybody. Not because I don't think I fit anybody. It's just that I, don't, I kind of see myself more humble. Like I'm trying to be like those guys. Mm -hmm. But in the past, I've been compared to. All right, hey, a uh, pretty solid, uh, pr pretty solid defensive lineman right there. Um, once again, Chris Schanfeld talking with 2015 NFL Draft prospect, defensive tackle out of Minnesota State, Brian Keys here on the CS podcast. And Brian, just a few more questions, and then I'll let you go. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, recently, no I know that you uh, participated in both the University of Minnesota Pro Day as well as the uh, in NFL Regional Combine, uh, where you were listed at six foot, three hundred four pounds. You ran a five five three forty yard dash, four eight zero shot a one eight five ten yard split, twenty five inch vert, uh, seven nine broad jump and 17 reps uh, of, of uh, 225 pounds in the bench press. Now, normally for defensive linemen, really those, you know, those combine, those pro day numbers don't mean too much. It, it all uh, matters uh, what, what's on film, which really is the uh, deciding factor for each and every player, in my opinion. But how do you feel that your, your regional combine performance uh, went? Are you satisfied with those numbers that you put up? I'm not, I'm not satisfied with those numbers at all because I feel like I, I just want to get better and I want to show improvement. That's why I was kind of shocked that I was even invited to the Super Regional mm -hmm. that they keep going because I knew I did well as far as the drills and stuff that you couldn't measure. I knew that's where I was going to shine, but I just had a competitive fire in me where, well, actually, the best way to describe it is I'm a D lineman, but I want numbers like a DB or a wide receiver. <laughs> if I ran, if somehow I ran a four, three, at the combine, which is probably like impossible, I'd be happy. And there's no way you could ignore me. I'd have everybody knock on my door. And that's what, that's what I set out to do. And when I didn't do it, that's what I was frustrated with. Hey, man, I love the determination, man. There's no doubt if a 304-pound defensive lineman ran a 4-3, I, I think that guy will be no, uh, going number one, man. <laughs> exactly. Well, Brian, now let's say there's an NFL general manager listening to this very interview. Uh, if I were to give you a moment or two to sell yourself, why should he want you a part of his team? Be sure I want me to be part of the team because I want to add to the championship atmosphere. I'm all about winning games. I'm all about bettering players, and I'm all all about promoting the organization. The 
big thing with me is I'm not caught up in individual awards. I just want to go out here and win games, celebrate with the team, and reach the ultimate goal. Because everything, if while reaching the ultimate goal, everything else will fall into place. And if things come for me, great. If things come for the other team, that's great too. But ultimately, we're here to win games. We want a Super Bowl, and we want to become legendary and be remembered. You spent five years at Minnesota State, including that redshirt year in 2011 uh, with that injury. Has it sunk in yet that you've played in your final college football game and that the next time you play will be in the pros? A little bit. I mean, even after a championship game, I felt like I didn't play my last game. But, I mean, going into it now, it's kind of like you'll never be able to recreate the college football atmosphere. But, yes, the NFL is way bigger and has way more fans and means a lot more. But there's just something about college football that you'll never be able to get back. Mm-hmm. Well, we are, uh, we are only uh, two days away from the 2015 NFL Draft. It's uh, going to be here in Chicago. Do you have any plans from April 30th through May 2nd during the draft? No, I'm going to be here at my coach trying not to check my phone as much. And hopefully I'm in the right place at the right time when it rings. Hey, that sounds great. Well, uh, Brian, that's all I have for you, man. I really do appreciate your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I, pre- I appreciate you joining the show on a short notice, but like I said, it was a pleasure. I'm wishing you nothing but the best throughout this process. Uh, do you have anything else for us before I let you go? I just want to give a shout-out to my agency, Inspired Athletes Dance, my Dave Schumann. Thank you for taking me on, even at such a late time. That was my fault. But uh, I really just want to give a big thanks to them for helping me out and everything. Hey, sounds great. Well, Brian, like I said, man, nothing but the best, and uh, take care, all right? All right, thank you.